Anyway, I'm here with this cute, 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 lovely couple. Like they're like my brother and sister, seriously. Uh, Hoàng Kim Cung and Johnny. Mm -hmm. Vâng. Yeah. But in Vietnamese, in Vietnamese, it's Phúc. <laughs> it's so cute when Hoàng Kim call you Phúc though. <laughs> So my name is Juan Kim, and I used to be a TV reporter and anchor. And many moons ago, and this is how I met Antai, I competed at the Miss USA pageant. I was the very first Vietnamese American woman to do so. I represented the great state of Nebraska. And so Antai Nguyen reached out to me, and that's how we started this relationship. But now I am a full-time content creator slash influencer made that switch a couple of years ago. Family is everything to me. And in 2015, my dad actually had a traumatic brain injury. He fell and my mom had been taking care of him by herself. And I just felt like I really wanted to be more hands-on. I was moving home for this new news job. And after seeing them, I decided, you know what? I have this blog. I have my Instagram. Let me try and do this full time. And Johnny had been pushing me to do this for a while now. And so it was like, You're off the cliff. You're going. And honestly, it was the best decision. Um, they always say you'll never forget time with your family. So being able to be with my family and spend that time with them, taking care of my dad, my mom. And then now, like, being able to have time to, like, be a wife, be a mom. It's been the best. I'm Johnny Van, lucky husband to Juan Kim. I'm an entrepreneur, run an internet service provider. And I think the things that define my life outside of my business are I met Han Kim in 2010. And then luckily enough, you speed up through 2019 when she moved to Dallas. And we made the jump into having her become a content creator full time. I mean, now we get to be with family all the time now that we have a child. And then ultimately, got married in 2022. Yep. And it's been a wild ride ever since. Now I've, I've learned in my career, uh, we have many alphas in the room sometimes. And there are times to sit back and listen and times to, <laughs> times we, to step we, we forward. We do trade off. We trade he's off. The, he's a keeper, Juan Kim. He knows when to listen. That's a keeper. Okay, so let's go back a little bit. Yeah. You born in the US. Yes. Okay, born Johnny in the also US. born in the US. Yes. yes. What I love and so impressed that you both born in the U.S., but so heavily influenced by the Vietnamese culture, by your family, by your parents. And like, you know, I've known a lot. Of, I've met a lot of girls and not everybody is so cool with traveling with the mom and like doing everything. With the mom. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, it honestly, my, it's my mom it's, is my hero, you know, <laughs> she she is. And yeah. it's one of those things where um, we were talking about this a couple days ago where You know, I have friends of all backgrounds, right? Yeah. I have Caucasian friends, Black friends, Latina friends, Indian friends, and we all have a different relationship with our moms. For your wedding, we did two sets of Ao Yai, yes. one for the temple ceremony and one for the Western ceremony. Yes. Right? The actual wedding sure. ceremony. Yeah, at the venue. Yeah, so I we kind of break, we broke it into two days, right? Because we wanted to fuse both and we had... A lot of um, family and friends come from out of state, right? So we wanted everyone to have ample time. So on Friday, we did the Le mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. my parents' house. So, mm -hmm. you know, when the groom comes to get his bride. Mm -hmm. And then we did the Le Hang Tuong. So that's the Buddhist traditional ceremony. Mm -hmm. So we wanted a set of Ao Yais for that, one for me and one for Johnny. Mm -hmm. And then on Saturday, we just kind of focused. It was more of like our party day. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we had, very fortunately, a monk from San, San Jose flew out, and he married us in front of all of our family and friends. Technically married us again. <laughs> um, second time. Yeah. And in front of everyone, because I, I really wanted to share, you know, our Buddhist religion with everyone and share that aspect. And so I had a white Ao Yai for that. Mm -hmm. And then once all of that was done, changed into a gown. A gown. Um, and then you also made a tuxedo custom for Johnny. Yes. Yes. And yeah. then you made an Ao Yai for my mom. <laughs> you basically outfitted the whole party. Yes. Yes. Because you two was like heavy influence on so many brides. There's so many brides who came mm -hmm. to us from your content about you is that you are so detail oriented and the way you share things is so 
detail that people are like, oh my God, it's so informative. It's a, it's also an education process because I think your whole wedding was also like an inspiration yet education process. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people love. So I know for me, when I think of Aoyai, I have one vision and that is the one my mom painted for me, right? So growing up here, you know, with my dad being in the war and our particular family history, something that was common in our family was, you know, Vietnam lives in us. We do not live in Vietnam because we're here. We're, we were refugees. Mm -hmm. But she would paint this beautiful picture of, you know, the school bell would ring. Mm -hmm. And in Vietnam, the you go to separate genders, go to separate schools. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, you know, the bell would ring and the girls would come out of school and they would just wear a simple white ao yai. And she's like, you know, the wind would be blowing. The tail of the ao yai would like be flapping mm -hmm. in the wind, long black hair. And she was like, oh, every guy's dream. <laughs> and every you guy know, dressed like Johnny's, out. like how Johnny, Johnny is dressing right now. <laughs> <It's> white <laughs> shirt and black pants. Just white. But, you know, it's just an inspiration. Just an inspiration. Um, so to me, I think I had that. And I can't remember where I saw this. Either either my parents own it or maybe my own had mm -hmm. it in their house. But one of those lacquered pieces Mm. There is an image of a Vietnamese woman just in a white yeah, outfit, yeah, yeah. yeah. long black hair, pearl necklace, and then the moon is in the top corner. And so to me, when I grew up, grew up thinking of Ao Yai, that's what I pictured. That's iconic. Um, mm -hmm. Like instantly, like anytime, even now, like I see so many beautiful, extravagant, simple, different Ao Yai. Yeah. But when someone says Ao Yai, that's what I think of in my head. What about yeah. you? For people who don't know, my, I'm half Vietnamese half Taiwanese, uh -huh. mostly ABC. So I speak English very well, but I speak third grade Chinese and uh, Vietnamese if I'm on a good day. <laughs> so my first memory with Ao Yai, especially going into the wedding, was Dep Jai and my Ao Yai was like... <laughs> that was like the first song that comes into my head. And so like... The, the, the opposite. Yes. So we, we have different, very, very different upbringings. So my my mom and dad are both business people. My dad's a boat person. So he he kind of, I would say, compartmentalized that part of our history. But when I met her and our families came together, a lot more of that history comes out. And I think kind of what you see from the people who who look at the content, get inspired, is there's always this like quiet, like... um want for our children mm -hmm. to have that culture right like my dad didn't really say how much he appreciated it until after yeah. and i think we see that in every culture where all your parents may say that they're happy they don't ask for things no. um but the more you can get back to the roots the more proud they are frankly and they're just so happy you can see it in their eyes these dresses weren't created so you could dress yourself this is actually created so other people can dress you this is great for royalty and so you should treat that day with that kind of um reverence reverence yeah yeah is I, I i really want everybody when they or like your sister are getting married like you know when they pick out that out guy and they hold it or they have it in front of their face their eyes and they're like i really want to wear this yeah. i'm so happy i get to wear this instead of do I have to wear this? Mm -hmm. Yes, we were about to say that. As a guy, and similar to the baby thing, there are not many options if you're picky and you have uh, a certain taste threshold you want to meet, right? Both for fitting and for quality. Like, there's a lot of loud... So people assume special occasions mean probably louder is better. But you can tell from our styles about, yeah, they're, they're, they say a lot but they're subtle and rich in design, right? The texture, mm -hmm. the depth, and that's kind of our style. And I think seeing more and more um, men appreciate, even, and, and, and women, just to appreciate texture, depth, fit, all those things that really come from high end, just design generally. And I think more and more people are starting to appreciate that and they see that that's unavailable elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. No, because the thing is like with our Vietnamese tradition, um, they always think more is more, right? They always think, yeah. I'm only going to wear this one time. Let's just put everything on it, you know? All the feathers, all the stones, everything. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and so, but then I think that's the one thing is um, I, I take in the East meets West, mm -hmm. meaning the East is we have this beautiful silhouette of the Nao Yai, right? It's like a canvas. And the West 
what I love about the West is sometimes less, I love the culture of less is more because mm -hmm. that become classic and, and, and timeless, right? So why don't we combine the two together and make this beautiful classic Aoyai that's like an heirloom piece that you think you might not wear it again, but because it's so classic that you will wear it again, right? Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to your Aoyai, like Johnny, both of your Aoyai, one's the green for the temple and one's the navy, for the um, wedding ceremony. The silhouette is just very simple. Mm -hmm. and if it's well fitted, I think it's like custom to, you know, not I think, but it was custom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. and, and it fit you so well. And then for Wang Kim, she's not, she's not new to the whole custom fit. So it was, it was, she, she's, she had that experience before already. But for Wang Kim, though, for your yellow gold oh yeah, for a temple was this, this brocade fabric. It's mm -hmm. on a stiffer side, but it's give you that that shape of like, you know, pre-1975. That's how women wear their oh yeah, you know, very like stiff and fitted. But then your oh yeah, though, your white oh yeah, the inspiration was you can you can say more about that. Yeah. So like I was saying earlier, I had this image of the Aoyai my mom had painted, right? The white, the girl wearing the white Aoyai leaving school. And so it also just so happens to be that, you know, they say the bride wears white. So yeah. I thought, what a perfect world where I can blend both, right? So I have known for a long time, I didn't want to wear anything red, right? I know most Vietnamese brides wear red, but yellow is my favorite color. So that's where we got that from. Mm -hmm. And so with the white, I wanted it simple. I figured if anything, maybe we have the tea ceremony one and the temple ceremony one be a little bit more ornate, but I wanted the white to just let the fabric do yeah. the talking. So we went with the white. You wanted to jazz it up because you were like, I'm time wing. <laughs> Got to jazz it up. So you added the, the French lace sleeves and mm. they were embellished and beaded. And that was so beautiful. But I think the aspects I love that made it more modern and made it more me was the train and the cape, mm -hmm. which are both removable. And yes. I love that. Yeah. And I want it to be timeless. And I kind of wanted them selfishly them to be like, oh, my grandma and grandpa were so cute. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, I, I, I remember the it. first time you guys um, came and then the, the photo, the photo of you two, I was like, you two are like the cake topper. <laughs> that iconic yeah. cake yeah. topper, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 yep. but but the thing is like the white aoyai what i think the minute the, the beginning like even before your wedding you sent me the in, inspiration and i was like my god i love this so much because it's it's untraditional because most vietnamese bride will go for red or gold because that they think that's tradition but no what if red is not your color you know what i mean then you can't wear it and uh and they think white it's kind of like funeral but then that's when I was like, you know what? That's where you need to do the beaded lace mm -hmm. to make it, to bling it up, you yeah. know, because then it will become very elegant. Mm -hmm. um, to, uh, the white out, yeah, with this iconic uh, schoolgirl outfit that your mom painted that picture for you. But then I took in the idea of Vietnamese with our culture, more is more, right? Let's yeah. put thing in. So that's yeah. why we had the beaded lace. Mm -hmm. And then we have the train. And I was like, the train is not enough. Let's do the cake. <laughs> oh, oh, no. and, you know, but it was the, but it's monochrome. It was yeah. one color. So therefore it's not gaudy. It's not all over the place. Because mind you, Pan Kim is tiny. I'm a tiny person. <laughs> want her, we don't want the Aoyai or you don't want all that to swallow her up, right? Mm -hmm. So that way that white but the, the 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 very important thing is that why did it work with the train and the cape because the fabric that we use for the train and the cape is so light yeah. it's long but it's so light and i remember you had a video of you walking it's literally like you have two wings right yeah. it was like wings and tail wing and tail and it <laughs> flying it yeah. was flying in the air and it was i think i think it was so it was so dreamy and ethereal when when you wore that and i remember I, I i i love you guys so much that you guys trust with the whole process that you were like we do whatever to show yeah. you and i was like pine game your fabric is delayed we have to switch it and you're like <laughs> fine yeah i'm like it's fine yeah i mean and honestly though it's funny because i like what we ended up doing yeah 
so much better. And I yeah. almost feel like this, it was meant to be, yeah. right? When we incorporated so many cultural details in our wedding, it wasn't even just for our culture, right? I got messages from followers who said, you know, I was on the fence about adding my Nigerian culture to my wedding, but now I am watching you do this. Like I'm inspired. And, you know, for me, I feel like that's what makes us unique. People can see it through the videos and through the content, but being able to embrace your history, your family and who you are, I think that it's like a lot of people just assume like, you know, I've gone to these things, I've seen these things and you kind of have hidden away part of yourself and part of your family. But after seeing more and people, more people do it proudly, beautifully, loud, more loudly than ever. Yeah. I think it's inspired a lot of people to, to bring their culture back to the front. You know, it's kind of like you said, it's different times when our parents were here, everything was about assimilation, right? They're yeah. learning English. I still remember my dad saying, I learned English from Three's Company. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Jack is like my dude. Yeah. yeah. And so those are the kind of like, now that we're born in the, in the, in this generation, we've had, we've assimilated, don't we? were born into it. We have that it. privilege. Yeah. And now we're lucky enough to, to take that in our generation and the next generation, you know, refresh everything that we've taken. How do you feel about non-Vietnamese wearing it? Yeah, I mean, you share a, be a beautiful story that one of your friends yeah. has, and she, she, so I think if more, the more we welcome them, right? Yeah, yeah. honestly, the more the merrier. I think one of the best parts of our wedding was seeing our mm -hmm. best friends wear an Aoyai. Yeah. And yes. you know, we, we, my sister and I um, measured every single yes. friend. I saw and that, your whole bridal party. Our whole party, right? Yeah. And it was so fun to, you know, have them take part in that with us and everyone loved their outfits. And it was just nice to measure everyone, have them be part of our culture. Um, this, I don't, it didn't get shared on social media a lot, but I yeah. just want this particular look, this particular color, and I want it to be this way so we can share that, like, you know, it's not always going to be loud and, you know, over the top. It was subtle and it turned out it happened to be the exact opposite mm -hmm. of Johnny's out yet. Mm -hmm. You know, he had the front panel that was patterned yeah. and then it was plain mm -hmm. and then they had um, Patter. the pattern and mm -hmm. then plain the front. And um, if anything, that's the time where you show these non-Vietnamese, you know, mm -hmm. how an out yai would, and it's possible to wear an out yai. Like, don't be shy about it and don't yeah. think that you're appropriating uh, our Aoyai. Yeah. And uh, and it's really a show, like how you wear it, right? If you wear yeah. it loudly and confidently, then you own it. But if you're going to yeah. go out and you be like, oh my God, I don't know if I can wear this, then yeah. it shows. There's more more for you, Huan Kim, how your mom mm -hmm. took you on this whole journey with an Aoyai, yeah, right? Yeah. Since you were young. What are your plans? Or what are you going to do with your daughter, with the journey of an Aoyai, yeah, of the Aoyai? Yeah? Oh my gosh. I actually haven't thought about this too much. Um, well, I clearly bought her an Aoyai before she was even born. <laughs> <laughs> a more modern one. Uh -huh. But I I think my hope for her would be similar to like what Johnny said, right? Do I have to wear this? Mm -hmm. Right? I never want her to have that reaction. I'm I'm sure her preteen years when she's like moody and about to be on her period. But you also went through that with your mom. I know. I, I, had, a turn out, you know? I, had, a, I had a rude rebellious face, but I yeah. like to think that that aside, yeah. I hope that she will always feel proud and beautiful in one. And I think the kudos to the Aoyai is it's so flattering for everyone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It is so flattering, so comfortable but I hope that she always feels beautiful in it. She never feels like she has to wear one. And I hope that when she wears it, she feels more in touch with her grandparents, mm -hmm. her great grandparents and, and every woman who came before her, mm -hmm. who made her who she is mm -hmm. that day that she's wearing one. With an out, yeah. But um, I just want to thank you so much to both of you, my cutest cake topper. <laughs> Do that pose again. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, I love that. And I love you guys so much. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that, you know, I was in this journey with you, with your celebration. And then 
the result is that you have this beautiful daughter that hopefully one day we get to meet her in person. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We'll bring her to you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> On the condition she gets a little out. Yeah. Well, let's finish with this. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you. Uh, I cannot wait to create more Aoyai and have more Aoyai story with you too. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.